Microsoft Information Barriers is a very powerful tool when well set. Some users have been looking for an all-explaining guide to kickstart their EMS Information Barriers experience, and here it finally is. Welcome to our definitive guide on Microsoft Information Barriers, Purview Portals, Segments, and Policy Management. It's important to ensure that your admin account has the correct roles and licenses to manage your organization's resources. However, the process of assigning roles and licenses, as well as enabling necessary features, can be a bit confusing. That's why we've put together this guide to take you step-by-step -step through the process and help you set up your admin user with ease. Whether you're new to Azure or just need a refresher, in this blog we will provide you with all the information you need to ensure that your admin account is properly set up. So, let's get started. Setting up an admin user for your Azure tenant can be a tricky task since it involves assigning the right roles and licenses to the admin account as well as enabling certain features. We'll go over the steps you need to follow to make sure your admin user is properly set up. First, you need to assign one of the following roles to your admin account. It's important to note that you may need to select multiple roles if you're having trouble accessing the Information Barriers Management area. Next, you need to assign one of the following licenses to your admin account. Without these licenses, you won't have access to the Purview Portal. You also need to enable scope directory search for Teams and verify that auditing is enabled in the Purview Portal. Finally, if you're using Exchange Online, you'll need to remove any existing Exchange Online address book policies. By following these steps, you can ensure that your admin user is properly set up and ready to go. But you might be aware that not every information barrier solution for Teams, WebEx, and Slack out there can work in real time. And what is more, they fail to prevent your employees from sharing sensitive information with external companies. Microsoft's information barriers policies don't work for federated users. If you allow federation with external organizations, the users of those organizations will be able to communicate without any restrictions. This means if users of your organization join a chat or meeting organized by external federated users, then information barriers policies also won't restrict communication between users of your organization. Are you struggling to understand the different sections of Microsoft's information barriers? Don't worry, you're not alone. Many people find the process of setting up and managing information barriers to be confusing, but with a little guidance, you'll be able to get the hang of it quickly. The first step is to access the compliance portal at compliance.microsoft.com. To do so, you'll need to log in with your previously configured admin user. Once you're in, you'll find three main sections that you'll need to look at. at segments, Policies, and Policy Application. Segments are where you define the different groups of people that you want to manage with information barriers. Here, you'll be able to create and customize the different segments that you want to use. Next, you'll need to set up policies. This is where you define the rules that you want to apply to the different segments. You can choose from a variety of options, such as restricting communication between specific segments or allowing only certain types of communication. Finally, you'll need to use the Policy Application section to start and monitor the policy application status. This is the most mysterious of all the sections, but with a bit of practice, you'll be able to master it. Sometimes, the policy application cycle can fail for no apparent reason. In this case, the only way to verify what's going on is to start it through PowerShell. Segments are a great way to manage communication policies for specific groups of users that are defined in the compliance portal or by using PowerShell. When creating a segment, you need to provide a segment name and one or more specific conditions using which the segment will populate. These conditions can be based on email, department, group membership, etc. You cannot use security groups. However, it has to be a Microsoft 365 group. Also, the maximum number of segments you can have is 100, according to Microsoft documentation. One important thing to note is that there can be no overlap for users in segments, 
meaning that a user can only be a part of one segment. PowerShell is the only way to check which users are part of a segment. There is no other place you can check that in the Purview portal. Segments are easy to create and provide a lot of flexibility when it comes to setting up communication policies. You may be asking what to do with segments that are no longer needed. Fortunately, you can easily delete segments that are part of an active policy in the Purview portal. To delete a segment from an active policy, simply open the policy in the Purview portal and click the Delete button next to the unwanted segment. You'll see a confirmation message, and then the segment will be removed from the policy. It's important to remember that you won't be able to delete a segment using PowerShell if it's part of an active policy. If you try to delete a segment using PowerShell, you'll get an error message. So next time you need to delete a segment from an active policy, just remember to use the Purview portal. It's the easiest and most efficient way to do it. Before creating a policy, we should know that policies consist of two parts, the assigned segment and the blocked or allowed segment indicating that this assigned segment can only communicate with the allowed segment or if it is prohibited from communicating with the block segment but is allowed to communicate with other segments or non-segment members. When creating a policy with a block segment, you always need two policies. For example, if you want to block communication between Group A and Group B, you need a policy where Group A is the assigned segment and Group B is the block segment, and you also need a policy where Group B is the assigned segment and Group A is the block segment. If this condition is not met, you won't be able to apply policies. Also, a pretty major limitation. A segment can only be part of a policy once, regardless of whether it's an assigned segment or blocked allowed segment. Without meeting this condition, you won't be able to apply policies. Check the steps to create a policy. Log into your policy management system and select the Create Policy option. Select the assigned segment and either blocked or allowed segment. If you are blocking communication, make sure to create a policy for each segment. Ensure that each segment is part of only one policy. Click Save to create your policy. To extend your policy to other groups or users, create a new policy with new segments. Finally, apply the policy in order for it to take effect. Following these steps will help you easily create and manage your policies. Remember always to double check that each segment is part of only one policy and that each blocking policy has two policies. Welcome to the section where we will apply the policies we've previously defined. If anything is set up incorrectly, then the policies won't apply. For example, there is no mirror policy for a block policy, so the policy application cycle won't start and your policies will remain the same. It's important to note that policy application does not occur continuously. Instead, it occurs through a policy application cycle. In my experience, this cycle can take anywhere from 30 minutes to 24 hours and the time it takes to apply may be correlated to how many users and groups your tenant has. Once you've ensured that everything is set up correctly, you can click Apply All Policies and wait for the application to complete. Keep in mind that there will be no message or notification when the application is finished, so it's best to just wait until it's complete. Additionally, you cannot modify policies during an ongoing policy application cycle so it's best to let the cycle finish before making any other adjustments. When it comes to phishing, malware, and data leakage, Microsoft Teams is no exception to being at risk. When you're not actively using Teams or are away from your computer, Teams will send an email notification containing a link to the missed message. Threat actors can exploit these Teams features to launch phishing attacks using malicious code. The guest access functionality in Teams could also lead to data leaks and unauthorized access. For instance, sharing files with external users or guests through channels even when it is no longer required, or continuing to provide access to Teams even after the meeting has ended, could result in data leakage or the visibility of confidential files. IBS Identity Blocking provide a complete block between Microsoft tenant entities, 
making it impossible for members of opposing blocking segments to communicate, make calls, join joint meetings, or share files. Unfortunately, this only applies to internal users. If an external Teams user adds members of opposing segments to a meeting, both parties will be able to attend. Troubleshooting IBS can be difficult and time-consuming. As it is done on Microsoft's side, the process is often a large black box. While PowerShell can provide some insight, it is not enough to fully control the process. Additionally, the policy application cycle does not happen automatically and must be monitored regularly. Setting up your IBS correctly can provide great blocking capabilities that are seamlessly integrated into many of Microsoft's services and apps, like Teams and SharePoint. Segments are an incredibly powerful tool for dividing your organization into manageable units using user attributes. With this feature, you can ensure that your data is secure and accessible only to the people who need it. Let's check how to enable scope directory search on NEMS Teams. Simply log into your Office 365 account and navigate to the admin option in the left toolbar. Then head to the Information Barrier Admin Center and select Show All in the left menu. Find Dems Teams and open the app. Select Teams, then Team Settings. Scroll down to Search by Name and turn on the option if it's not already enabled. Finally, hit Save Changes to complete the process. Auditing the Microsoft Teams administrative activity is a crucial step to ensure that the policies you have implemented are being properly followed and adhered to. This process involves monitoring the actions taken by administrators and users within the platform and checking them against the policies you have established. Here's how to get started with auditing EMS Teams. Access the Purview Portal. This is the platform where you can view and manage your EMS Teams settings. Click on Audit. This option is located in the left side navigation menu. Start recording user and admin activity. Once you are on the audit page, you will see an option to start recording user and admin activity. Click on this button to begin the auditing process. Once you have started the recording, the platform will automatically monitor all activity within NEMS Teams, making it easier to identify any potential policy violations. SphereShield is a software solution that provides information barriers for organizations to prevent the unauthorized sharing of sensitive or confidential information. The real-time proactive approach of the software allows it to inspect and handle communications in near real time, blocking or masking messages, files, images, calls, and desktop sharing before any incident can occur. This feature is particularly useful for organizations that need to comply with regulations or internal policies that require granularly blocking communications. The software can also help organizations to reduce the risk of data breaches and insider threats and improve overall security and governance of sensitive data. SphereShield offers several benefits and advantages for organizations that need to comply with regulations or internal policies related to data protection and communication security. Some of these benefits may include real-time, proactive inspection and handling of communications to prevent incidents before they occur, ability to block or mask messages, files, images, calls, and desktop sharing in a granular manner allowing for compliance with specific regulations or policies. Addressing the need for proper compliance by providing a solution that does not compromise near real-time performance. Improved security and governance of sensitive data by identifying and addressing potential risks before they can cause damage. Overall, SphereShield offers a comprehensive solution for organizations looking to protect their sensitive information and comply with regulations. AGAT software will be your best alley with information barrier solutions. Contact us to get a short demo.